In this video, we are going to show some MATLAB examples uh, following chapter 3 of the book Software Receiver Design. All the MATLAB codes are downloaded and in the same directory. These are the MATLAB scripts. First, let's open the MATLAB script called the specsquare.n. It's here. This code is showing you how to uh, review or how to plot a signal in both time domain and a frequency domain. So we have a frequency is 10, time, is, uh, tem time span is 2, fs is a single period, it's 1 over 1000, so we can think that as 1 millisecond. t is from the first time, first millisecond, with a step of 1 millisecond and all the way to the time span 2. x is a sign which is a uh, which only take positive negative one if uh, this value is greater than one it's giving me a positive one if it's less than z less than zero give me a negative one and uh, that's a square wave a square wave coming from the cosine wave and then we plot it using a command line called a plot spec plot spec of this waveform x with the corresponding to the time stamps of TS. And in this case, run it. In this case, it will show both the time domain signal and the frequency domain signal. <clears throat> what it implies is, of course, it did a Fourier transform on the signal X and it's showing the frequency domain uh, components. So here, that's the figure number one. We see that the top picture is the x in the time domain, and the bottom picture is the frequency domain signal. And uh, using the magnitude, I'm only showing the absolute value of capital X. The signal in the time domain with component square wave. A square wave in the frequency domain is a sync function. So indeed, we have a magnitude looks like a sync. And because in the time domain, we have a periodic signal. You can think that as many of those square waves that repeats itself. And therefore, periodicity in the time domain corresponds to the discretization in the frequency domain. So indeed, we have a sampled version of this sync function shown in the frequency domain. The next example is a Gaussian random noise. So open the script called uh, spec noise dot n. It's here. So we have the length of time, um, the resolution or the steps of the time. And uh, the signal x is a random n, Gaussian random noise, with 1, um, with variance 1, and uh, according to the time steps of time over ts. And then we plot both the time domain and the frequency domain signal. So here we have, this is the noise with the top figure that's the noise in the time domain and the bottom figure is the noise of the amplitude of noise in the frequency domain. We see from this bottom picture, um, the frequency has, uh, has uh, components across all the frequency span. Indeed, we have a random noise and this is a white noise. White noise um, and uh, we have all the frequency components. Now, given a white Gaussian noise, the, the correlation, autocorrelation of the signal itself in the time domain, what should that look like? Let's see. The correlation, I can use a MATLAB uh, command called convolution. Convolution of uh, x and then and another x is the time inverse of, of the signal. So x from end steps up negative 1 to 1. Okay, let me call that r. That's the autocorrelation signal. Then on figure 2, plot r. Here we are. So that is the autocorrelation of a white Gaussian noise. We can see it only has one value when, when this correlation lag, the autocorrelation lag is zero, actually in the middle that's zero, which means that exactly the signal 
aligned with self. So what it gives, it gives the noise energy. And then if I have a offset, no matter how large the offset is, and because it's a white Gaussian noise, it's the, the sample is uncorrelated from sample from one sample to another. Therefore, the correlation should be zero. It looks like that. There is only one value at zero and then zeros elsewhere. Next, we are going to plot a, the spectrum of a cosine wave. So the MATLAB code is uh, spec cosine.n. So here we have a cosine function with time from ts, step size is ts 1 over 100 seconds, all the way to 2 seconds. And uh, x is a cosine function, 2 pi ft plus phi. Phi, in this case, initial, initial phase is 0. And then we plot the spectrum of x. Plot both the time domain signal and the frequency domain signal. So here is the, the result. Um, we can see from the book the a cosine function has a spectrum which we have those two spikes exactly at 10 hertz and a negative hertz because f here f is 10 hertz so we have those two spikes now if I change the signal x to a complex exponential like here exponential function of uh, j 2 pi ft plus phi and then I do a Fourier transform using using this command line y equals to fft of x then run that and let me using uh, figure 2 here subplot 2 1 1 plot the time domain signal because it's a complex signal I just plot the real part of x so it looks like this. And then on the second half of this picture, I'm going to plot um, ABS of Y. What we have here is the frequency, frequency spike. Um, because FFT is coming, it, it starts from frequency zero all the way to now Christoph, all the way to sampling frequency FS. And uh, if you want to change, switch the DC0 to the middle, I need to do a uh, subplot F. I need to do plot ABS FFT shift, shift to the middle, DC to the middle of Y. And I check figure 2. Indeed, I have a frequency spike only at, in this case, actually that is corresponding to 10 hertz. If you're counting the middle is 0, and this point now is the crystal frequency. Here is the native crystal frequency. We can see I only have one spike because the time domain signal is a exponential. Next, let's look at an example of a linear filter. The example code is called filter noise. So we have a, a signal, which is a random signal. In here, x is a random signal. Figure 1, plot the spectrum, plot the signal and its spectrum of this random signal. Then we define a FIR filter. In this case, it is using FIRPM, which is a special case of Parks, McLennan, Epo, Optimal Epo Ripple FIR filter. Um, later we will see all these different kind of filters but here we're just using this special case and it gives us the frequency of 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.21 and all the way to 1 corresponding to one sampling frequency so from the excuse me from half of the sampling frequency that's an acrist frequency so that is uh, from the smallest frequency to the largest frequency and the amplitude is 1, 1, 0, 0. So the first segment is 1, second segment is 1, and then the last two segments is 0, 0. So at those points, it tuned to 0. Therefore, it is a low-pass filter. Similarly, we have here the second filter is we define those six frequency points 
and the amplitude is 001100. Therefore, it's a bandpass filter. From these two cutoff frequencies, this frequency will, will rise to 1, 1, 1 in the middle. And the third one is a high pass filter. So the amplitude is 0011. So the frequency, when it goes to a higher range, the high end, the amplitude is 1 and 1. So we have a high pass, high pass frequency. Let's see how it turns out. So the first picture, figure 1, is the random noise in both time and the frequency domain. Figure 2 shows the okay, figure 2. Figure 2 shows the low pass filter output. So the frequency from 0 and then to this low frequency, the cutoff frequency. And then from that on, these, these are the cutoffs. And because we have some uh, ripple effects, so you will see a very small, very small energy still here at the tail in the high frequency end. Figure 3 shows the bandpass filtering effect. The output is this in the middle is DC, so cutoff frequency F1, F2. Within those two frequencies, I have values. Out of that, the components will be suppressed. Figure 4 shows the high pass filtering output. DC in the middle is 0, and then the, this on the right, this point is the highest frequency. So the high frequency component will show at the output. And of course, we got a negative part as well. That is the mirror image, because my uh, time domain signal is real. It's a real signal. And we also have the, the last picture. last picture is combining all these different filters with a low pass, band pass, and high pass filter. So it clearly shows that the linear filter can do a good job to, to pass certain range of the frequency and suppress or block other range of the frequency. In this case, we see that the filter is uh, defined as B, that is FIR filter, with, uh, with element with 101, actually 101 coefficients. Then what we need to do is we need to use this filter. Filter is the filter coefficients and my input signal X. One is actually the, because it's FIR filter, I do not have a denominator. I only have everything on the numerator part. Later we will see that. And then the filter on this term, the A is equal to 1. And then it is corresponding to that I have my X convolved with the filter of B. And then give me this output signal, Y. In figure 5, what we did is we are using FFT and FFT shift instead of using plot spec. So it gives us the same result. We are showing the signal in the frequency domain. In MATLAB, we can also use another uh, command called the filter designer. Filter designer is a very nice toolbox that gives us how to Give us the way to design a filter. Design a filter impulse response of H. Then I can um, download this H into my MATLAB space and then convolve or filtered or convolved with my input signal of X, resulting a filtered output of Y. So the parameters is showing here that we need to we need to define all these designs back. The default Default is a low pass filter, it looks like that. High pass filter, it will change to this, this picture. So low pass half filter, we will have a band pass, a, a, a pass band from DC0 all the way to the pass frequency F. And here I now have a stop band frequency starting from F stop. And then we have the stop band from F stop all the way to Nyquist frequency, which is the highest frequency in my digital signal. Here you can choose different filter type. Filter we can have uh, IIR filter, 
FIR filter of equal ripple. Minimum order. That's the minimum order can 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 use here in order to fulfill all these frequency specs. So what we want in this example is that I need to have the frequency FS sampling frequency is forty eight thousand hertz, and the the, the passband frequency color frequency here is the ninety six hundred hertz. Stop band frequency this point is uh, 120, 100, uh, 12,000 hertz here. The passband has a ripple, so we have this range of passband ripple of this range of 1 dB. And then the stop band, stop band also has a ripple. The ripple will be down from this, um, from this uh, passband magnitude of uh, A, which here is down 80 dB. So let's design this filter. It shows shows like that. So that's the filter that fulfill all these requirements and we need to use 50 coefficients, order of 50. And if I change that to a special order, I only need to use I only want to have 10 out of 10, 10 coefficients design the filter, then it gives me some of uh, the the design which which is not that precisely follow my spec, but I have the save in the model order, so I have less coefficients. Now these coefficients are the filter coefficients h, and then you can store the filter into the MATLAB space to use for filtering. Next, let's see an example of a mixer. Now this mixer is also a upconverter. In many literature, it's also called a modulator, modulator upconver upconverter. Uh, because in digital communication, there is also digital modulation. In order not to uh, have any uh, confusion, people like to call it up conversion. The sample code is uh, called uh, modulate.n. That's here. In this example, we are showing a signal of span half second, TS1 over 10,000. Therefore, the sampling frequency is 10 Hz. And uh, that's the T, that's the time span from TS with a step of uh, uh, 1 over 10,000 all the way to 0 0.5 second. Carrier frequency is 100 hertz, 1,000 uh, 1, hertz. So the signal C modulate, C modulate is a cosine function of 2 pi FC T. That's a cosine function with, with carrier frequency 1,000 hertz. My input is another cosine function with frequency fi of 100 hertz, so it's cosine 2 pi fi t. Then what I do is multiply the carrier cosine function with my input cosine function, y. y will be the modulated or the up converted signal. And then we are using figure 1, 2, 3 to show the carrier signal, the original input signal, and the up converted y signal. So it looks like that. The first one here, figure one, is the carrier frequency. It is the uh, the cosine function of a frequency of one of one thousand hertz. Here, one thousand hertz. If I zoom in here on the time domain, that is the cosine function with high frequency. Figure two. Figure two shows the original signal. That's a cosine function with frequency. 100 hertz. Figure 3 is the modulated signal. Here is the modulated signal. That, that is the original signal of uh, 100 hertz modulated to carry frequency 1000 hertz. In the time domain, if we zoom in, it shows, it shows I have a frequency. The high frequency is 1000 hertz. But also, this 1000 hertz cosine function is being enveloped with a small, if you can see, this is a small frequency sine wave, a cosine function, which is of frequency 100 hertz. That is our original input. That, will, that becomes the envelope of my carrier, a cosine function of, 10, of 1000 hertz. In the frequency domain, we see that the, the signal indeed is being up converted signal up converted to around carrier of 
1000. Therefore, my signal at a positive frequency part is uh, two spikes at 110 hertz and 900 hertz. Similarly, I will have two spikes at a negative part. Figure 4 shows, shows those uh, three signals in the frequency domain. Then instead of using plot spec, we are using FFT to calculate that and then using FFT shift to show. That gives us exactly the same result. Next, I'm going to use another carrier frequency to upconvert the original input signal. So I'm using a carrier of uh, 1500 Hz. I call that a C mod 2. That's another cosine function, 2 pi, 1500 times t. That's another carrier. Y2 is the upconverted up -convert, up input signal of, uh, with the carrier F2. C mod 2 dot product piecewise multiplication of my input signal x. And then the, uh, the overall y, y sum, is the first output y, which is upconverted by 1000 hertz, plus the second upconverted signal, that is the input signal upconverted by 1500 hertz. Then the last figure, I'm going to plot uh, both the time domain signal and the frequency domain signal using FFT. Let's see. So here is the result. The top picture shows the time, dom time domain signal. If I zoom in, um, these are the two upconverted sine wave cosine function add together. That's the sum of those two sine function. In the frequency domain, it is very clearly show that I indeed um, upconvert that original cosine function into two around two carriers. One is around carrier 1000, and another is around carrier 1500 hertz. 1500 hertz. Now, if those input signal using different input signal, I can upconvert it into two different carriers. One is around 1000, another around 1.5 thousand hertz. As long as they don't overlap. I can easily combine these two signals and transmit those pieces of information together.